In this lecture, we're going to talk about rules for calculating probabilities. So in this case, we're going to deal with situations where we know some probabilities. It's not like the end of the last video where we had to figure out probabilities from scratch. So the first rule basically says that one of these outcomes must happen. If you have a sample space and it has n different outcomes, whatever n is, if you're rolling a die, it would have six outcomes. If we were picking a card from a deck of cards, it would have 52 outcomes. So n would be 52 in that case. So what this says is the probability that x1 happens plus the probability that x2 happens all the way to the probability of xn happening. If you add up the probabilities of each outcome, you will definitely get 1. Something must happen. Either you'll get x1, or you'll get x2, or you'll get x3, or x4, all the way to xn. And we can use that idea to help us calculate some probabilities. Imagine we have an experiment, and that experiment is we pick a Skittle, which is a fruit candy, from a bowl, and noting the color of it. And the possible colors for Skittles are red, green, yellow, orange, and purple. So let's say we know that the probability of picking a red Skittle is 20% or 0.2, a green is 0.3, picking a yellow Skittle is 15% or 0.15, and orange is 25% or 0.25. What's the probability of picking a purple Skittle from the bowl? So pause the video now and try to figure this out yourself. Okay, now that we're back, we know that the probability of picking a red plus the probability of picking a green Skittle plus the probability of picking a yellow Skittle plus the probability of picking an orange Skittle plus the probability of picking a purple Skittle must equal 1. And we know most of those things, so we can fill it in. So we have probability of picking a red Skittle is 0 0.2. Similarly, probability of green is 0 0.3 plus 0 0.15 plus 0 0.25 plus our unknown, the probability of picking a purple Skittle equals 1. So we add up the left-hand side. We have 0 0.2 plus 0 0.3 is 0 0.5, 0 0.65, 0 0.9, so we get 0 0.9 plus the probability of picking a purple Skittle equals 1. So we solve for the probability of picking a purple Skittle. We're thinking of this guy here. We're thinking about this as our unknown. So we're thinking of this like our x. So we're solving for x. So we'll subtract 0 0.9 from both sides. And we get that the probability of picking a purple Skittle, or X, is 0 0.1. So you can use the probabilities of all the other outcomes here to figure out the probability of the missing outcome. The next rule here is basically the same thing, but rather than sample spaces, we're just talking about events. We can figure out the probability of an event if we know the probability of the outcomes inside of that event. So we just have to figure out the probability of each of the outcomes inside our event E, add them together, and that gives us the probability of E occurring. So for example, let's say we're rolling a die and noting the number on the face, and let's say our event E in this case is rolling an even number. So our even numbers are, of course, we can list them all as the set containing two, four, and 6. So we know that the probability of rolling an even number in this case is the same thing as the probability of rolling a 2 plus the probability of rolling a 4 plus the probability of rolling a 6. And I will just tell you, or you might just know this intuitively, that um, rolling a number on a die is equally likely. So we take that 1 and we split it up into six equal parts, so the probability of rolling each of these numbers is one-sixth. So this is going to be one-sixth 
plus a sixth, plus a sixth, which is, of course, three sixths, or if you like, a half, or 50%, or 0.5, however you want to express it. So we can use that idea to figure out the probability of events. I want to talk about um, one type of event here called the complement of an event. So let's say we have an event E. The complement of it, which we write as E with a little C as a superscript here, as a power, if you will. But all it means, it's the set of all outcomes that aren't in E. So they're in the sample space, but they're not in event E. So I'll give you a couple of examples. So with our, with our first experiment that we keep going to, rolling a die, well, here's one event, rolling a square number, a 1 or a 4. So we can draw a little Venn diagram to help us. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So these events here, this is in E. This is our, our set E, our event E then the complement is everything outside of it. So if this is E, then the complement, which I'll highlight in green, is absolutely everything else outside of E. And in this case, it's 2, 3, 5, and 6. Well, another experiment could be playing a hockey game. So let's say the event E in this case is the home team winning. Well, the complement of that is everything but the home team winning, which means the home team either loses or the home team ties. So that's how a complement works. And thinking about probabilities of outcomes all leading to sum to 1, well, since we have some outcomes in here in E, event E, and the rest of the outcomes in the complement of E, well, if we sum those two probabilities together, we have to get 1. So the probability of an event occurring and the probability of it not occurring has to be 1. And it's kind of helpful to rearrange here. So you might see it like this. We'll just subtract the probability of E from both sides. But the probability of a complement is 1 minus the probability of the event itself. So imagine if... Um, the event was, or if the experiment was looking at the weather, say E was um, it raining out. So let's say the probability of E, I'll just make this up, is 30%. So if the probability of it raining out is 30%, then the probability of it not raining must be the rest, 1 minus 30%. So that is indeed 70%. So the probability of it not raining is 70%. Next I want to talk about combining events. So sometimes we want to know the probability of uh, either event 1 or event 2 occurring or the probability of both occurring at the same time E1 and E2. So we have a little notation here. So if I want to talk about outcomes in event 1 or event to, then I take what's called the union of these. I combine these via a union. And I have the set here, which is all outcomes that are in E1 or E2. And you're thinking of the Venn diagram like this. So it's everything that's in either set. And let me give you an example. Let's go back to that rolling a die example. So, if E1 was all of our square numbers, 1 and 4, and E2 was all of our odd numbers, 1, 3, and 5, then the union of these, E1 union E2, is like a little uh, small U between them. Well, that's all elements in E1 or E2. So it's 1, since 1 is in both, uh, 3 is in E2, 4 is in E1, 5 is in E2. It just has to be in one or the other, or both, to be included in the union. 
And similarly, an intersection is when we want to talk about when outcomes are in both events, E1 and E2. So let's use the same experiment and events above. The intersection of E1 and E2 are the outcomes in common with both events. In this case, we have just one that's in common in both. One is in E1, and it's also in E2, and none of the others are. So the event E1 intersection E2, it's like a an upside-down little u, is just the element 1. So union, we're thinking of as the word or, and the intersection, we're thinking of the word and. It needs to be in both. And a little rule when it comes to um, probabilities of ors and ands, or of unions and intersections. And we can do this via the idea of counting. So remember, we're thinking of probabilities as number of successes over total number of experiments. So we can think of the probability of being in event one or event two as the number of outcomes in E1 or E2 over the total number of outcomes. And we're just kind of, just for um, elucidation purposes, we're assuming that kind of every outcome in this case is equally likely. The same ideas still apply if that's not the case, but just so we can motivate this. Well, we're thinking we're counting things, and in this case we're counting the number of outcomes in E1 or E2. So if you remember from a previous video, when we're counting this kind of or or union situation, we have to make sure we're not uh, double counting. So it's going to be the number in E1 over the total plus the number in E2 over the total minus the number in both because we don't want to double count. Remember, we don't if we're counting the number either in E1 or E2, well, if we just count it, there's 2 in E1, 3 in E2 in this case, so there must be 2 plus 3 is 5 in the union E1 and E2. Well, that's not true. We counted 1 twice, so we need to subtract off one copy of the elements in both. So this is motivated by our counting rules here. So this rule can apply to pretty much any situation where you have two events. So that's very nice. Let's do a quick example on the next slide. So we have this situation here. We know we have this experiment where we have events A and B. And we know some things about these events in terms of probabilities. We know the probability of event A occurring is 30% or 0.3. And we know the probability of B complement occurring is 0.8. And we also know that the probability of the union, A union B, is 0.4. And we're asked, do I have a little typo here? That problem would be too easy. We would just 0.2, 0.4. So we want to find the probability of the intersection A intersect B. So maybe pause the video now and think about how to go about this. You'll have to use the two formulas on the previous slide. So pause the video, give it a go. Okay, now that we're back. Well, we're interested in the probability of A intersect B, and we have something along the lines of A union B. So let's write down the formula that has both of them in there. So we know that the probability of A union B equals the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of them both occurring, A intersect B. And what do we know? 
If we know three of these, we can solve for the fourth. So let's write down what we know. We know probability of A union B is 0 0.4. We know probability of A that's given to us is 0 0.3. We're looking for the probability of A intersect B. And we don't have the probability of B, but we do have the probability of B complement. So we can use that to work out the probability of B. We know the probability of B complement is 1 minus the probability of B. So, or we could even write, just solving for the other thing, the probability of B is 1 minus the probability of B complement. These are the same formulas. Also, just to note, as an aside, the complement of a complement is the original event. If it's not not in the event, it's in the event. But that's just an aside. Don't worry about that now. But anyway, we know the probability of B complement, so it's 1 minus 0.8 or 1 minus 80%. So, we get that that equals 0.2. So we know the probability of B is 0.2. And now we just solve for our unknown. If you want, you can relabel it X in your diagram or in your equation. I'll just leave it as the probability of A intersect B and solve for it that way. So we know 0 0.4 equals 0 0.3 plus 0 0.2 minus the probability of A intersect B. That's what we're looking for. Okay, let's solve this. So we get 0 0.4 equals 0 0.5 minus the probability of A intersect B. So there's a lot of ways of solving this. I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to add the probability of a intersect B to both sides. Remember, I can add whatever I want to an equation as long as I do it to both sides. So I'm going to add that. And that makes it positive. And then I'm going to subtract 0.4 from both sides to get rid of that. And if I do that, I get that the probability of A intersect B the 0.4 cancels with the negative 0.4 to give me 0. 0 0.5 minus 0 0.4 is 0 0.1. And I added and subtracted uh, the probability of A intersect B. So they cancel out as well to give me 0. So I have the probability of A intersect B is 0 0.1. So the union formula, I should say the union intersection formula, along with the complement formula, are very helpful formulas for determining probabilities.